such an asshole. Oh, we got one of my favorite topics to talk about, human intelligence, uh, because it's just going to shit. And what's sad, it's my belief that uh, the capacity for human in intelligence hasn't gone down. It's just they're a bunch of lazy motherfuckers. You're too lazy to actually put the effort into being intelligent. Hello, Cap. I graduated with distinction with a degree in engineering. I won't say what, several years back. And let's let's notice this. He had to say distinction because you know, this is even in my day. You couldn't graduate with honors unless you went into the honors program, which was all my it was the it was the beginning of lick the black vagina. I'm like, no, I don't see what it has to do with uh, me getting a degree. Did you did you they were big on like, well, did you donate time to charity? Uh no, I'm too busy working. Uh, so I lied on my resume and said that I graduated uh, summa cum laude, which uh, based on the traditional GPA, I did. So just for some advice for you kids out there, if your GPA is that high, just say summa cum laude. High distinction, distinction. That's like the thing. Well, you didn't go through our la, 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 uh, program, uh, so we can't see you graduate. Without, no, no, you graduated with honors. That's that's you did. You graduated with honors. <clears throat> It was immediately hired to work uh, in an industry, working on a thing uh, that I don't want to identify you with. I have diligently saved my money instead of blowing it on useless crap and have grown my net worth to 100000 between stock and cash equivalents. I'm extremely successful in both my workplace and also compete in Brazilian jiu-jitsu at a high level. So here, you know what's interesting? Um, Death Valley is... Over that way, by about 80 miles, I think that's even got more moisture than what you just made all the girls in the world. Like when you described your hardworking, responsible engineer Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, they just dried up worse than the desert. I had it, he didn't mention that. I just had to point that out. I just love you can have the most responsible, hardworking. Here you go with this. Look at this guy. Uh, he never saw the inside of a jail cell. Uh, while my life is going well, I find that most people in the workplace bore me and end up despising my job due to not having a task to do. Okay, so what I need you to do right now, right now, <clears throat> is you go get. How not to become a millennial. You're not a millennial. It, 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 it's, that's not why I'm having you. And I want you to read the chapter about the purpose of a career. You have an insanely high IQ. You are, unless you are in PhD, STEM, science level academia, working on cold fusion or some other stuff, You every job you get, you will be bored at. Because jobs are tasks that other people don't want to do. If they were fun and interesting, no matter how high level, they would do it themselves. But that's why they're paying you to do it. You will not find, and your brain will not be satiated working even high level jobs. So I would, you're one of the rare instances, I rarely recommend this, but for high IQ individuals I do, consider getting a doctorate in the sciences. Just for shits and giggles. Uh, nuclear physics, it doesn't even, and here's the thing, it doesn't have to be practical. Like nuclear physics, I mean, yeah, there's some employment, but it's not as practical as like, say, electrical engineering or something. Uh, a PhD in general physics, why the hell not? All right, and then you could do the research papers and advance and math and whatever. Go, go ahead and do that. <clears throat> but not at the uh, expense of your career. Uh, not having enough task to do. And you never will. I'm going to tell you again, I ne never did I ever average above four hours a week working in, in the real world. I mean, I was there for eight. I had the alt tab technique where I could switch between what I was really working on. And then I couldn't even say I was working on work because there was no work to do. I'd get caught up. That That's normal. All right. So I guess what I'm also trying to do is prevent you from trying to find the job where I'm, I'm challenged at my best. You will not be challenged at your best. Take the money, be happy, and run. Mm. <clears throat> to fill this time, I've decided to gain the CFA designation, which my company will pay for. Very interesting. Well, that'll, that'll give your brain something to chew on. This does not require me to go back to school, which I believe would be a waste of time in, in an MBA. My plan is to eventually use my skills to begin growing my own clientele so I don't need to rely on a job for income. 
I'd appreciate any advice on developing my own business as well as finding fulfillment outside of work. I do have some great friends in both my jujitsu gym and people I met in school, but find that most people, including many of my family members, bore me greatly. Yep. Curse to the high IQ. Wrote a book about it. Link below. So before you go, <clears throat> before you go, and we'll, we'll get to your strategy. The very first thing you're going to do is go get Curse of the High IQ. I have it linked below. You can listen to it or you can read it. I don't care what. So you understand where you are in this world. All right. It is, I'm going to say it very clearly. It is a disability to be a super intelligent person in today's world. The simple point of it being that society is not geared for the extremes. It's designed for the masses. And that's a disadvantage. It's not, there's no good or bad being intelligent or dumb. It means you are statistically aberrant and your society is not geared for you. Nor should it be, it has to be geared for the masses. Now we do make accommodations for those who are genuinely mentally retarded and impaired, uh, but we make no accommodations for intelligent people. If anything, we tax them like, hey, you're so smart, you make all this money. Hey, fuck you. And then the sports ball is always always a sports ball game on. <clears throat> and so once you look through it through that lens, I'm not saying you're a victim. That's not what we're saying. I'm saying you're statistically aberrant and society is going to piss you the fuck off and your contentment, not your happiness, but your peace and contentment will not be found trying to search throughout society to find fulfillment and get along with people. All right. It isn't going to happen. So that very first thing is you need to assess your situation quickly and clearly which I can do a little bit here, but it'll be much more thoroughly clear. It'll be like putting on glasses for the first time. Like, oh my God, I see it now. Read that book, Curse of the High IQ. And anyone else out there is like, why are people so fucking dumb? We should do like a, <clears throat> like a, like a PSA. Do you find people annoying and stupid? Are you always waiting for people to go faster? Do you want to push the old grandma boomer lady that the nanosecond she steps outside the Walmart door, she stops? you might have high intelligence. Then it pans to the kid. High intelligence? Gee willikers, what's that? Well, you see, Jimmy, sometimes a statistically rare few happen to have higher intelligence than normal people. Then you notice that you might be able to go Mach 7, but everybody else is a sop with camel. <laughs> uh, so go ahead and read that. Uh, where was your specific question? I'd appreciate any advice on developing my own business as well as finding fulfillment outside of work. All right. So your business is going to give you a little bit of fulfillment. Any kind of challenge is going to give you fulfillment. The CFA is going to give you some fulfillment. Running your own business, I think would do that. As for running your own business, I'm not familiar with your field. I'm adjacent to it, but I'm not familiar with it. I do know that there are some truly mathematical genius minds, of which you are probably one of them, where you're going to pick up the, you know, the guy they did the movie The Big Short on. I know another guy. I emailed him. I don't know where the hell he went. He, he goes between New York here and Arizona. He never emailed me back. I hope he's alive. Um, <clears throat> just a genius. And he dabbles in what you do. He's also a computer programmer. And then what else did he do? But uh, you're, you're looking into getting to, to, uh, what was it <clears throat> developing business? I'm assuming you're talking about in trading or finance, right? There, there's some people who just have this niche, this thing, they can see it. Heck, I got another client. He, now I think about it, he's in banking as well. And, um, I'm like, why the hell you, why, why you, why would you want to do that? He's like, I'm bored. Okay. I guess. And this is, this is a level higher than me. How you go set up a trading platform, how you go set up a trading company, how you do, what do you, what do you hedge? What do you, I don't know. I've, I've never been a trader. All right. But that might be your niche. You, so the only thing I can tell you is that you are probably going to be the guy that sees something in the market that your bosses or your colleagues or nobody else sees. And not to say that thing or that uh, opportunity for arbitrage will exist forever or that you see that there's a different way to offer trading or whatever surface it is. You, I, I'm going to have a feeling that after you start working a while, you're going to identify a, a, a business opportunity. You go capitalize on it. What that is, I don't know. But aside from any advice on developing your own business, yeah, 
keep an eye out for that profit opportunity and then figure out a way to build a business that capitalizes on it and you know get an llc look at me if you're in finance you might have to look at federal regulations be smart enough to drop a couple hundred dollars on a lawyer <clears throat> in that field knows what they're doing um but uh, you're you're relatively young i think you still need more years of work in that field to see that opportunity but once you see that opportunity or any opportunity like i didn't i didn't come up with asshole consulting because i worked in banking it has nothing to do with finance it's just i was driving across kansas one late one night and then like, oh hey i got an idea I'd actually sat on my idea list for like three to four years. And then I finally pulled the trigger. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So whatever it is, do it, research it. Don't give up a good job for something that you're not too sure of. See if you can trial run it part time. See if you get your business going like, okay, it works. We tested the prototype trading platform or whatever. <clears throat> and then, then do it and go make your money. Uh, so that's all I can really help you out there. But you you will seem to be the type to find that. You 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 definitely would. And and if you want, you know, go get a PhD in, in in statistics or whatever it might. You know, the CFA would be enough. But you know, then you could go teach. Then I mean, I hadn't even thought of this. <clears throat> I was thinking more of it from working with colleagues and research and being with, you know, some truly genius minded people, but then you could also teach physics, you know, at a higher level, you know, you know physics one-on-one, every idiot has to take that. But now you're surrounded with younger students, young minds, you're, you're in that environment. And then once the hot girl, the one hot girl, or maybe not so hot, but the one that's bangable, who's like in physics five, uh, when she graduates, then you can like, hey, you wanna you wanna be my thing? And the girl says, I'd love to be your thing. And you can talk about physics formulas, whatever the hell romantic things are talked about with physicians or not physicians, physicists. Uh, so yeah, that's one other thing. But then you say, uh, as well as finding fulfillment outside of work. Uh, <clears throat> you have some friends, hold on to them. Uh, that's good. You do jujitsu. That's great. Hold on to those people, but also. Don't try to keep them forever. They're going to go away through the normal variety of it. Vagaries? 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 Is that the word? Vagaries of life? I think that's it. Um, <clears throat> and here's another thing. Prepare to be alone. Unless you're actually working and you're, you're, you're so statistically aberrant. They're... You know, and you, you've gone, you've had, probably had statistics. Go look at the belt. This is why, okay, first, first, before you even read the book, any book, go get your IQ tested on queendom.com. And all these people, it's not statistically valid. The fuck it ain't. I saw research done on it. And that is the widest distributed and, and uh, taken test. I would argue it's more accurate than anything else. And then you go look up the Z-scores and see how rare you are. Now, I'm going to guess you're at least two standard deviations, which, God, I got to remember. <clears throat> no, that would put you at 130. You're above 130. You're like three. You're 145. So you're talking a fraction of 1%. So put this into perspective. You go into a room of 100 people. There's maybe, there's like, you're likely the smartest person in that room. And there's likely only two people you could talk to without you being bored out of your fucking mind. That is how rare you are. And instead of like, and this is what nerds always say, what am I doing wrong? Why am I not getting along socially with other people? It's because they're fucking morons. That's not bad or wrong or anything, but if, I, I wrote it in the book. You got an IQ of 145, right? Okay. <clears throat> so to the normal person who has an IQ of 100, you got to understand that it's like them talking to someone with an IQ of six, no, 55, which if you have an IQ of 55, you're not wiping your own ass. You are severely mentally impaired, all right? So, and hopefully that provides a little bit of perspective. And just for you normies out there, I think you're popular. You, you know, oh, good, you're popular. You bought the trinket on 15% interest rates. You trying, you talking to like a STEM major, like your typical early childhood education major, talking to a, a physics major, it is like you, uh, Little Miss 102 IQ, 
Mr. MBA dude, bro, talking to someone who, who really needs their own ass wiped. That's how dumb you are to the genuinely smart people in this world. And for you, if you're up there, the whole world is like that. Why are they going slow? Why they don't see what I see? Why are they so fucking stupid? Why did they sign up for that mortgage at 12%? Why did they buy that brand new car? Why doesn't she hit the gym? Why doesn't he hit the gym? Because they're fucking stupid. And even I, look how agitated I'm getting. I should be more intelligent. I should know. I should be more philosophical about it. It's aggravating. <clears throat> it's annoying. And so the best thing you can do is no. I am not going to find, I have to find a very small niche of people, but do not waste your time going to the sports bar or here, here. You want to know where the truly, the most contemptible, worthless, average normies at the normie convention. You want to know where the normie convention is? Here's where the normies go for their convention. They go to trivia night. Okay. That's the normie convention. That's even more normie than going to the game. <clears throat> these are not your people, all right? So there, we got that. So don't try to find belonging to a group of people you simply are not dumb enough to associate with and, and think that's cool. Um, the, the fulfillment, uh, business, finding fulfillment outside of work, okay? So that's, that's kind of one. Now then, <clears throat> you know, and I go into this in the book, let me go through a couple things that, that you can do. All right. First, find smart people. Like I said, PhD program, the CFA program. If there's like, I know you maybe want to self-study and stay at home and study. I would go to an actual group of CFA. Like if there's a CFA chapter in your town, go there and study with those people. Go talk to them. Right? You're not really going there to study. I mean, you are going there to study, but you're going to meet some other colleagues, acquaintances, people that might be interesting. Um, do not exhaust yourself trying to fit in with stupid people. It's, it's not, man, nerds always overthink it. It's, it, it's just being popular. That's it. It's doing the thing that you were told to do. That's it. That's normal people to obey, to have shiny trinkets and worthless materialist crap. That's normal people. Right. And I just solved it. It's not a, well, how did I, what, how come I did? No, no, no. They're, they're, they're just stupid sheep doing what they're told. And when you go, oh, don't waste your time with the sheep. Okay. Uh, three, move to a more intelligent and traditional cultures. You kind of do that locally. Like I said, you know, you worked in the, the physics department at Stanford or MIT. I would also consider uh, moving overseas to uh, an East Asian country where the countries have the highest IQ. It's not, you know, people think, oh, my God, Asians are really smart. It's like, eh, no, I think they just try harder. I, I think their parents make them do math. I don't know if they're genetically, biologically smart. The culture just, they study more. <clears throat> and so it's, and then on top of it, you, you're like, yeah, you're talking about foreign students usually form that opinion here in the United States or visa people. Well, yeah, those are the best of the best to make it. Your doctors, your surgeons, your people got here on scholarship. So you're looking, you probably went to school with some of them. Uh, you're looking at the cream of the crop. But that five-point IQ bump, I think China might be the highest. Maybe Singapore, one of those two. Japan is up there, Korea. It's not going to solve your problem, but it is going to increase the percentage of the population you can associate with um, a little bit more. Unfortunately, you're going to have to learn a language, which is going to be hard even for you. Because uh, Asian language, hey, I, did, I talked to modern life, John, I guess there's two alphabets in Japan. I'm like, what the hell? Why do you make things so? Don't, none of you assholes tell me English is a really hard language. Learning. Go fuck yourself. German has like 12 conjugations of verbs. So does the Spaniards. Then you got to throw on the sex and the gender. He goes, we go, they go, this go, that go. And then it's like, wait, is it a group of people? And is it female? Then you got to conjugate the fuck that shit. English is easy. Go fuck yourselves. <clears throat> um, anyway, that is something I would consider. I would also, I don't know if you have the time, isn't totally germane, but um, nice guy, the land of losers. It, I cannot help. It's a story about an American guy. He's a nerd, super nerdy, and just the hell he went through dating in the United States. And then he went to Asia, boom. Those were his people. I think he went to Taiwan. Um, 
and things worked out. People were on time. People were professional. People were punctual. And I, he married an Asian gal. And so I think uh, in generally a, a East Asian society might be more conducive. It's not a silver bullet. I'm just saying go go travel over there. Uh, <clears throat> oh, traditional cultures as well where they honor their tradition, where it makes sense. Usually tradition comes through centuries of trial and error, and they figured that thing out. That's why they did it. You know, like like crazy concepts, like you should have a mom and dad for nuclear. Like the nuclear family is the best way to raise kids. So you don't have time for that in the West. The West is fucking mentally ill. They're fucking mentally ill. Not only are they stupid, they're mentally ill. You don't have time for that. So you want to find a traditional culture like, yeah, you all work because there ain't no welfare. That's right. Yeah, you got it. Um, <clears throat> I would consume older foreign media. Don't consume anything modern or Western. There's, I don't watch the news. I don't watch the latest show. I think the best movie out there right now is Godzilla Minus One, which is a Japanese production. I was shocked. Shocked to find Ghost of Tsushima was made by an American company. I would have thought that was Japanese. I'm not like a big... Um, Xenophile or Asia for weeaboo, whatever the term is. I just thought like, oh my God, Asia's the greatest thing. I'm just like, you know what? They don't have pink hair and nose rings and the their video games are fun and they have a bunch of woke shit. <clears throat> so since that affects, you know, what if you're home at night, dude, fire up Hogan's Heroes. Watch the old great classics of World War II, like A Bridge Too Far, Guns of Navarone, the Spaghetti Westerns. There's no reason to watch what Doctor Who with black, literally black vagina Doctor Who. Um, anything Disney, just just avoid it. You're you're already going to be aggravated having to go out in public to get gas, to order your fucking food, to get your car fixed right. I, there are so many fucking stupid people, and it's getting worse. You don't want to come home and get further aggravated because it doesn't work. I'd say in the United States, never build a house. Never. Learn to become your own tradesman and carpenter so you can fix your own house if you have one. But never build a house in the United States because your contractors are not only drunks. Uh, I'm sorry. Not only are they stupid, but they're drunks. They're sophomore little eighth grade boys. Just fucking avoid that nightmare. Uh, I, I honestly would be traveling a lot because here's the, here's the problem you face. Generally speaking, you're, you are so statistically aberrant. You are going to suffer from inefficiencies in this culture, in this economy. I would try to find a culture and economy that, okay. Yeah. More intelligent, but operates more sanely, more logically, uh, has more integrity, has more honor. And your aggravation will be less. There's still going to be slow, dumb people driving in Japan. Okay. I don't, I've never been there. I'm just going to assume. Uh, there's still going to be someone who gets your order wrong in Seoul, Korea. All right. But it ain't going to be every freaking time. And you wondered, did that, did that slack jog yokel just spit in my food? And not on purpose, just because they're drooling because they went to the public schools. All right. So I'm saying control your environment, but while you're here, especially on your free time, you should not be consuming modern media. I stay the fuck off TikTok, stay the fuck off social media. Half the reason I'm so aggravated is that's my job. I got to look into the abyss. Like, what the fuck is it now? What bullshit? What? What precious little princess is crying because she's found out at 48 she can't have kids? No. What is? What is the bullshit today? <clears throat> So I would, you know, seriously, go find a, a good traditional, it would almost be dishonest, but find a traditional religion. I don't care what it is, as long as it's orthodox and traditional, that might give you a community that's like stable and sane. And you just show up, you know, you show up at the synagogue, you know, like, hoy, you, uh, you did, nah, I just like it here. <laughs> you go to a mosque, uh, Hello, and they're like, hey, you Muslim? Nah, just hanging out. I, I just like you guys. That's all. You get rules. You follow them. I read your book. I enjoy it. Yeah, I just no. I I, I do everything except the belief. It, you know, they probably won't let you in. I guess they'd be dishonest. 
No, yeah, let's celebrate that. I'm I'm, I'm all for it. I'll, I'll I'll bring my my food. Uh, so I would definitely consume old and foreign media, good foreign media, obviously, but not Japanese anime. But by the way, oh, Japanese anime. No, 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 it's horrible. Japanese anime in general is horrible. Okay, you got to find the classics. Um, ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Uh, while you're here, immerse yourself in work. I think you're doing that well. Get some hobbies. You already got that. You're going to do jujitsu, but I would recommend maybe picking up ballroom dancing. Again, not even to get the girls or because even ballroom dancing is fun, but it's structured. It's more higher intelligent. People kind of do it. It's not going to hurt you at all. Um, it will give your mind something to chew on. <clears throat> and then... Uh, here's why I have like a little bit of a, I'm on the philosophical gray area. Um, I, I have grown to have a contemptuous hatred of normies, not stupid people. If you're like actually biologically dumb, like you're alcohol fetal syndrome, which may just not that smart. Okay. I, I, I'm, I have, I have a, a moral qualm taking advantage of you, but there's this nice range in the IQ distribution curve starting at about 90 and going to about 115 were these they're normies they're obedient they're they're popular they're not popular they're just conformist is what it is and that'd be fine that'd be fine if you're just dumb ass sheep in it but they, in the united states especially people they make that their value. Like I'm so average. I'm super average, and every, I I have the most people agreeing with me. And I'm way better. See, that's where they get smug and they get an attitude. I'm way better than you, <clears throat> Mister Whatever. Drives a used car, has a modest home, Mister Plumber or Mister Nerd in your case. Oh, you're an engineer. <laughs> you're not cool. Like. I don't know what's a what's it? Lance, you know, Lance has a fucking rented vehicle and he's a salesman who's embezzling money from his company and they don't know that yet. All right. Those the arrogant normies, the 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 hubristic assholes, those motherfuckers take advantage of. Absolutely. Like how Oprah took advantage of her audience wasn't dumb. Oprah's audience was not dumb. It was there was some thought, like, or the view. I mean, you're sitting there, you're listening to what essentially is a, a seminar about topics that are interesting. We're not, we're not talking people that need someone to put the spoon in their mouth. But the hubris and areas, like, oh, yeah, and you're right, by the way. You're going to solve all the world's problems. Like college graduates, the most average, boring sheep that have the most huge egotistical view of themselves, those fuckers need to be taken advantage of and society's already done a pretty good job of it i don't know how and maybe your job or your you're not your job your <clears throat> business idea wouldn't do this i think it'd be something very technical and tech very nerdy which is fine but you know like oprah telling baby boomer women that fuck men and you don't need and you're perfect and amazing all right oprah made billions of dollars off of that, those women. Ruined their lives, but fuck them. They're dumb. They wouldn't have listened to anything else. College. Colleges and universities and the professors and the admin have made trillions of dollars over the past two coming up on three generations of young kids signing away their life for worthless fucking degrees. Whereas I, dude, I hate universities. I hate teachers, I hate professors because they just are there to fuck you over and enrich themselves. But you got to hand it to them. Think about that. Here's a four-year degree for $125,000. I'll tell you you're smart, and I'll tell you everything you want to hear. And yep, Jessica and Jason Christ, you're going to go save the world. Yep, here's your environmental science degree. Oh, you didn't get a job hall. Oh. Well, it must be the patriarchy or Donald Trump or the Republicans in the Senate or whoever whoever it is. If you got a master's degree, that oh, you still didn't get a degree? Oh, well, maybe you get a doctorate. Like, you got a bravo, Operation Evil. <clears throat> and I've talked about Operation Evil before, where I'd write the most horrible books ever for women. I would, I have products uh, for people 
that only truly stupid people would believe in and buy. And I'm like, dang, that would, oh, that'd be, I forget how much money I'd make off of it, but it'd feel good. Just like you actually are worsening your financial situation, giving me money for this shit that ain't going to do Jack, but you want to believe it. Like, you know, Ozenpick, holy cow, I should have been a pharmacist. Oh, whoever came up with that idea, brilliant. And there's other weight loss drugs, but we salute you, ladies and gentlemen, who came up with that. Um, but yeah, if you got to you gotta judge, you don't want to take advantage of a truly, you've ran into those people where you look and it's like, yeah, your mom probably, I'm being serious, your mom probably drank, it ain't your fault, you're, you're slow. Not not even mentally retarded, just 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 slow. Um, or people who just they don't there there's not a there's not a bad bone in their body, not a not a slight whiff of hubris or arrogance. But you give me college protesting feminists, oh, I will fucking sell them heroin. What do you want, sweetheart? I'll take your fucking money all day. So <clears throat> in a in a kind of retributive justice sort of way for having to tolerate these assholes. I guess I'm, it's more that they're assholes, not that they're stupid. You're going to be given opportunities to take advantage of them. Legally. Legally. And so, I don't know. <laughs> like, it sometimes it doesn't really hurt them, but man, here's an example. Okay, here's what it is an example. Where it's not, there's no victim. I got a, I don't know who manufactures them, but for you guys that sell jerseys, sports jerseys to fat, overweight, dumbass American men, you get these dumb guys to spend $200 on a jersey with, with their favorite homoerotic football or sports baller guy on the back. God dang, man, that's great. How did you do that? You got, you got that fat piece of shit. Who, whatever, works his bullshit job, some washed up jock who still thinks sports is a thing, doesn't play it. Hell no, you don't play the sports. That might actually be fun and healthy, but you watch it. The morons that watch the analysis shows, oh God, you, you got, they are dumb. They'll spend 250 bucks for a thing made in Japan that's got, or China, that's got somebody's name on the back of it. <clears throat> that's the type of stuff I'm talking about. So there's, you know, was it? There's a sucker born every minute. Absolutely, take advantage of them. Um, and then I got a book out there called The Menu. It's called Life Without the Opposite Sex. In your case, it's not going to apply. You might actually get a girl because you're, you're, you're competing in jujitsu. You must be at least reasonably attractive, man. But in there is still some good ideas about what to pursue in life. I'm not, I'm not kidding. Religion, if if you can believe. In a in a god or a higher power or whatever, I would definitely look into religion because there's a lot of wisdom, there's a culture and a community, and people who actually really do believe, I would say are well, they're at least more honest, um, and I would say higher moral caliber of people. So um, <clears throat> yeah, and and what you might as well do is read all the the different religious texts out there. There's a lot of wisdom in all of them, all of them. Oh, but the Muslims say this. I, okay, yeah, they're a little violent. I get it, but good. You know, Muhammad or not. Yeah, Muhammad, you know, don't lend or borrow. Okay, tell me more. That, uh, that sounds like a sound financial policy for a government. Okay, and personal finances too. <laughs> All right, I'm listening. Uh, but, and then also a, very closely adjacent to that is philosophy. I'm not giving away the whole book, but... You know, these are things that there's not a clear, you know, you're in STEM. You do, 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 boom, there's the answer. Six. And you know it's six because you have rules and laws. Uh, but sometimes why are you here? What are you doing? What should I be doing in life? That is a long journey that you really can't do by yourself. And it really helps to read you read the the ancients, whether it's religious or um <clears throat> uh, secular, be it the Greek philosophers or something like that. And so that would that would give you something to uh, to munch on, and you can find all this other shit in the menu, adventure and this and that and do to do. What you really, what you really, if you want to see me do Operation Evil, I do have a menu for women in there that I break it down. There's appetizers for everyone. There's the 
ladies menu and then there's the men's menu because women go first I'm very traditional that way and if you want to read the women's menu it's like oh my god this is horrible it's like yeah but they won't eat anything else like i could have filet mignon i could have a healthy chicken dish i could have shrimp scampi i could have all that. nope they want their mcdonald's they want their fat and they want their sugar and they want their salt and they want their lard nom, 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 nom. all right here you go this will ruin your life, but you wouldn't listen to anything else. <clears throat> and ladies, you can't read from the men menu. That's for men only. Sorry. <laughs> Girls are picking. Oh, yeah, I don't want this. What? Do, do, how much I get? No. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, that's that's what I would I would recommend. Uh so you in a general sense. One, you have to know how st statistically aberrant you are and how rare it is to find someone in your uh, at your capacity at your level. <clears throat> Two, the uh, know and realize the solution does not exist in normie world. You're not missing anything. It's nothing more complicated than you're, you almost want to look at it like you're a completely separate human being. You're a or not a human being. You're a, a, a whatever uber human being or super saiyan human being so you're you're not you're not you're almost not the same species in some regards right so these are not your people <clears throat> so know where to accurately diagnose what the problem is right? three try your best to control your current environment to surround yourself with the most intelligent people that you possibly can engage in intelligent activities participate in hobbies that you enjoy and the media consume, make sure it is good quality. Do not, do not. Hey, you want to go to the game? Now, maybe, I don't know. I've, I've known incredibly intelligent people. There's an economist who just loves football. I'm like, and he's smart. I'm like, what the fuck? Don't you have literally anything better? Than, like, do you want to play football? That Let's go. I used to play. Uh, it was a meetup group in the Twin Cities. We played touch, you know, because we're old. We don't want to cripple ourselves. <clears throat> um, but okay, maybe, maybe you know what? If you like football, go go to the football. I put that on par with the symphony, just to show you guys. Like the symphony, you just sit there and listen to this music. You're like, okay, this music is kind of boring, actually. It's not. And I, is this what people want to act smart do? Is you come to this symphony thing? Okay, yes. Yeah, all right, I got to go do something else. Um, but if you enjoy it, go do these things. Uh, I'm not saying be antisocial, quite the opposite. You got to go and find the people that you belong to, but man, don't go to Walmart, <laughs> go to Walmart on the off day. We got to go grocery shopping. Don't go at 5 PM. That's when the normies come out. You're hungry at noon. You either get lunch at 11 or 1 PM. You don't go at noon with the fucking norms that show up all the Fucking known fucking things. Oh, you're standing like the lines. Avoid the lines. The lines. See, there. That's that's another rule you could use of taking advantage of the conformists. If those people, like, if you see people in a line to get a sandwich, those are the people. Those are the suckers. Those are the ones you should go after. Hey, you should get your wife a five-year anniversary ring. And look at that. It's $53,000. Well, you don't want to have a small penis, do you? No, I don't have a small. And you spent yourself 250 bucks on that man's jersey, didn't you? Well, what do you think your wife thinks about you, sir? Uh, you don't want to get divorced. You know, a $5,000 investment now could save you a $150,000 divorce settlement later. Think about that. Why, that's 3,000% rate of return if it carried the numbers right. <laughs> You want it? That's better than investing in your 401k. And by the way, you should get a car. Okay, okay. I'll get in the line. <laughs> Make sure your kids go to a liberal arts school. Sign here. Co-sign the loan, too. You can't put a price on good education. Oh, you can't. Oh, like, how do these guys even breathe? That's why I want to know. You girls cannot select for intelligent men. You really can't. You select for some pretty dopey guys out there. Oh, let the, I'll have this guy's kid. Like, what? Really? Honest to really? Oh my god, we're bankrupt. We don't have any money. Yeah, you married a fucking moron. <clears throat> uh that, that so anyway, so uh one diagnose the situation. Well, one read the book Curse of the High IQ. Diagnose the situation accurately. 
No, the solution is not, you're not going to find purpose and meaning with normal people. Um, three, stay active, hobbies, participate, run your business. I Opportunities to hang out with intelligent people like the CFA, go to a, an actual physical location and study group. I would recommend once you have enough time, you would be an ideal candidate to look into a doctoral program in some high level thing like mathematics, statistics, physics. It doesn't have to be practical or applicable. You're only going, and then I, uh, that would get you into academia, which is going to be filled with a bunch of woke Marxist pussies, but they're smart woke Marxist pussies. Right. And then you can teach, which I always found that intellectually stimulating because I get to talk about, you know, my expertise and I was able to explain it to normal people and their eyes would get well, like, oh, I get it now. That's why we can't print off more money. La, la, la. I'm going to get pregnant at 19 now. Oh, my God. I'm poor. <sighs> uh, and then I would definitely be looking overseas. Matter of fact, I would be seriously, you go find out who's got the highest IQs. <clears throat> I would avoid China just because it's it's not communist. It is fascist, one in the same. It's just what how they spin it. No, these are state-owned enterprises that own it, not the government. God, no, the government doesn't own, own that. That's a state-owned enterprise that owns that. Yeah, but you own the state-owned enterprise, the state-owned enterprise, so the government really knows it. No, 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 it's not that way. Uh, no, yeah, 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 it is that way. So I'd avoid China. If I look at Singapore, uh, Korea, South, uh, Japan, um, oh God, why can't I think? Why can't I think of? There's more East Asian countries. Than Taiwan. Uh, I see the big blob of China, and then all the peninsulas of all the different countries. Is Thailand pretty smart? I don't know about Thailand. Mongolia, maybe. You could go hang out with the Scandinavians. They they're not more intelligent. They they're they're book smart. They're the straight A students. They're just really good at studying. They just said they get really good PISA scores. Um, but they are dumber than fuck when it comes to street smart. I just think they study well in Scandinavia. I don't think they're actually intelligent. I think they're just bookworms. And it's cold up there, and the the sun goes away for half the year. I I would just avoid that altogether. <clears throat> uh, but trying to find more intelligent actual countries, communities that you would get along in. It's Malay Malaysia's right next to. Well, we share the same kind of archipelago there. Don't go to Wyoming. I swear to God, don't go to Wyoming. <laughs> don't go there. Um. Yeah, and then just. You know, try not to get upset that why can't I find people to belong? That's you're not going to belong. It just isn't going to be that way. All right. So link below <clears throat> curse of the high IQ. If you are, I recommend everyone get your IQ tested. So, you know, generally what you're capable of. You say, well, what if I test poorly? Well, then you didn't study enough. And that's part of your work ethic. So I like I like the IQ test, even, even though it doesn't actually represent your actual intelligence, what you're capable of. It shows you how hard you're willing to work and take a test. So if you're a lazy sack of shit, and you might have an IQ of 150, but you get yourself an IQ score of 86. Like, well, yeah, if you're going to mail in your work, yeah, that's all. It's, it's re representative of what you're capable of. And you're intelligent, but you're lazy. So it's too bad for you. <clears throat> but take your IQ test. Uh, read the book, Curse of the High IQ. Also linked below is, I think, the menu, and then enjoy the decline. Uh, because even though it doesn't really necessarily talk about intelligence, the mental state of the West, we've just had too much money shoved up our ass. We borrowed too much. We got the world's reserve currency. It it just it has turned Americans into mentally ill. I don't know what else. Creatures, monsters, um, <clears throat> just just what is the word I'm looking for? Mutant humans. I know someone, what's his name? Uh, professor, the jolly heretic. He says something like spiteful mutants. It, it, in a certain way, he's right. But I mean mutants in that they are mutated and no longer mentally healthy or functional. And that doesn't mean they're not intelligent, but 
uh, an intelligent guy or gal isn't going to discern the dysfunctional and they're going to drive you fucking mad. Don't watch the news. And there you go. I think that's good. All right. <clears throat> we got some super chats. We got some super chats. XX, two bucks. I wasn't to push grandma's move. I wasn't. Oh, yeah. I want to push grandma. Yeah. No, they do that. They do. I don't know if they do it in your town, but over in Rapid City, you will walk out of a door, any door, choose your commercial place. Walmart, restaurant, doesn't matter. And then Gertrude and Herman just, yeah, let's talk. Oh my God, Marilla. Fucking ram my card into you, lady. And there's not enough money in Medicare to put you back together in Minecraft. That's violence. We do not advocate that. I don't, by the way, I don't actually mean, you know, I just want to, you know, like someone cuts you off. You're like, I just want to ram them off the road. Like, okay, so you're really advocating murder. And you think about it like, well, I don't want them to die. And then you're like, yeah, I kind of did. <laughs> Which is why we have laws against murder. Uh, Heinrich Dorfman, five bucks. I'm going to contribute to society. Here's my genius idea. Make golf balls with famous people's faces on them. You're welcome. Hey, Heinrich, go do it. You could probably do that online. Uh, Rusty Fuel, five bucks. Physicists talk about thrust vectoring on their dates. Yeah, all the dates that they get. <clears throat> Evan, five Canadian. I tried getting a side gig teaching college math or physics. That mark is saturated with out-of-work PhDs and senile boomer profs who won't retire. Yeah, the um, <clears throat> the amount of overeducated morons we have where all they can do is teach. That's the the irony is like unless you get funding, your, your PhD in physics ain't going to really do much. And all you can do is teach. Um, you know, NASA only needs so many scientists. But uh, yeah, and I remember I remember that. Like I, I remember teaching college economics and college statistics. And I was like, oh, this is really enjoyable. And then all of a sudden, like, oh, you didn't pass enough people. And then oh, we lost our funding from the from the federal government. We're shutting down. <laughs> Just by the way, avoid education if you get now if you get an opportunity to teach part-time, sure, go ahead and do it. Do like a community ed program, like teach people how to cook, fine, go do it. But anything like an actual K through college education, unless they're gonna give it to you. And you need advanced degree to do it. I would just avoid it. It's not a career. It's, it's, dung is fun, two bucks. Or you can drink or to tolerate low IQ people works. Oh, yeah, that's what I did. You're right. <clears throat> You're right. You can you can ply your brain with drugs. Um, that is something you can do. And I did do that for almost two decades. And then I had to quit because my my organs weren't going to tolerate it much longer. And so now I had I I went to um, root beer floats and did just more hiking and more motorcycle riding and more work. I as you guys could tell, like, oh, you gave up drinking, and I'm like, yeah, that's why I'm so pissed off. And some of you haven't noticed, man, Cappy's getting angrier in his old age. He's like, no, I just stopped drinking. <clears throat> and as I said before, people ask, what's it like drinking? I, I stopped drinking, and I said, it's like. All the stupid people in the world, but with Bose surround sounds and high 4K definition. It's just so fucking painful. Whereas with the booze, it's like, yeah, it's all right, man. It feels good. <clears throat> I roll there 4 a.m., 5 Canadian. I find places open 24 hours and go in the wee hours just to avoid fuck with. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I would do. Unfortunately, many of these places are no longer 24-7 after COVID. And don't forget that a lot of young people don't work anymore. Because they were raised by, you know, people with an IQ of about 97. Your average public school teacher. Look it up. It's actually 103, which is still so fucking normy. Naughty DJ Aftershock. Five bucks. A smart career path now I would recommend is to become a mental health nurse practitioner. Every MHNP I know makes 300000 a year just on the low end. Um, <clears throat> you are not wrong, Naughty DJ Aftershock. We had, well, we still do. He, he didn't go anywhere. His therapist.com, Dr. David Maloney, Paul Benjamin over at Apex Mindset. This, um, what, better health, the, the online, get your therapist online, uh, there are so many ill raised. Oh, you mean even asshole consulting could be considered part of it? There are so many ill raised children because their parents fucked shit up, and the teachers lied, and the boomers lied, and the Democrats lied, and the Republicans lied a little bit too. 
<clears throat> not as much as the Democrats. Yes, they are better than the Democrats. No, they are not the same. Um, <clears throat> the, these kids are so fucked up that if you got your, uh, I think it's a master's degree for you to actually be a therapist. Think your master's degree, you got to work for someone else. But if you got to, I, don't quote me on it. You can't get by with a bachelor's. That's what happens to every girl. I'm going to major in psychology. It's like, did you look up how to be a psychologist? Because you need your PhD. Oh, yeah, well, maybe I'll go tea. Uh, why can't I buy a man? Poor, I can't afford it. Extra whipping cream on that coffee. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> Where the hell was I going with that? Perspective. Oh, if you get a master's or PhD in therapy or counseling that you can run legally your own license and you can run your own practice, dude, do it online. I could say, and Dr. David Maloney is like, should I do it? I'm like, yeah, you got your doctorate. Go do it. You know, I, I could send you people. I think in six months he was book solid. He was worried whether he'd have enough work to quit his daytime job. And and he did. I mean, you even see it now. See, look, I, I should probably do a video on this. <clears throat> For all of you under 40, therapy shouldn't be normal. Like you watch these videos and, oh, you know, get yourself into therapy. I got my therapy, therapist, therapy, therapy. You know, there was a days we didn't have therapists. You just went out in life and you didn't need it. It's like they need gas or water or oxygen therapy. No, that's not normal. It can't be healthy either. Uh, but there's such a demand because so many people were lied to and they think therapists have the answer and they don't. The answer is get off your fucking ass. Get in shape, go have some good sex, become a beautiful woman or a handsome man, be successful, work hard, get a fucking life. Talking to this schmuck ain't going to fucking give you a life. No, you don't have disorder. No, you're not the depressed. No, you're not this. No, you're not that. You're just a lazy sack of shit who needs to get off your fucking ass. <clears throat> and you, you over there, you need to get fucked and have an orgasm so you might actually have your brain reset. Like, oh my God. Oh, I fr oh wow, that was fun. Again, I think I think orgasms per capita. I don't want you just put me in command. Orgasms per capita. We're not we're not we're not doing fiscal and monetary policy anymore. What gets people to be thin, hot, attractive, and having more sex? The, then don't worry, the economy will take care of itself. I need ozone pick. You need to go on the fucking treadmill. Aaron, what's it like not drinking? <clears throat> Candy Graham from Mongo, five bucks. Relying on other human beings as little as possible is the best advice Aaron, the curmudgeon celery, has ever given. Words to live by, kids. Where was that? I found someone's. So people have sent me quotes. I'm like, well, who said that? And they say, you did. I'm like, oh, I did. Well, then I found out where, I guess on Goodreads, if you're an author, people will take quotes that you said that they thought were good. And so I'm, I was reading through it. I'm like, I don't remember writing that. You know, I've written multiple thousands of pages. I've, I've, so I guess I did. <clears throat> like, dang, I do say something intelligent every once in a while. Uh, Marley Analytics, five bucks. See here, he's a guy who got his own business going on. Tucker Carlson Network just aired a video about white women libs paying 5,000 to an Indian woman to be told they're racist for two hours. The bar said, there, exactly, exactly, Marley. That's what I'm talking about. Operation Evil. Like, I'll just come, remember the South Park episode where Cheech and Chong were selling um, uh, tampons to the women of South Park, and they said it was made by American Indian hair. Women, Amer females, Amer uh, female, Amer Native American female hair, because it was more absorbent and the girls were buying it. <laughs> that shit. <clears throat> Absol absolutely. Absolutely. Marcelo, uh, MJ, five bucks. What do you think about the movie The Highest of Stakes? Like, is it food or did you spell steaks wrong? The highest of stakes. <clears throat> the highest of stakes, 2023. I haven't seen it. It came out in 2023. Why would I see this? And just so you know, movies that aren't woke, you know, like, oh, this movie isn't woke. They're not that good either. <clears throat> There's no, comp I'm, I'm half tempted to go see Godzilla minus one because, uh, Chato, the elder Chato, the old guy in Canada, he did a great review. He loves it. Turk, not Turk, um, critical drinker loved it. 
Neurotic loved it. So I might go see that one. But, you know, uh, Mission Impossible, the latest Tom Cruise one, I mean, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. It wasn't worth three hours of my time. Here, here's my standard. Equalizer 3 is that barely met my standard. Barely to go to a theater. It could have been better, but it, it was good enough. Uh, so what is this? Richard Hart embarks on a groundbreaking mission to revolutionize the world of finance. Fueled by his unwavering belief in the potential of blockchain technology, he sets out to create a game-changing network called Pulse Chain. I, uh, another thing, as I'm getting older, I don't have time. I, I don't have this. I don't have the energy to watch serious drama anymore. Like when I was younger, when Saving Private Ryan came out, I could handle it. I don't think I could handle that now. I don't think I could handle it. I don't think I got the fuel in the tank. Uh, pen 764 200 Philippine pesos. Is that what it is? Uh, thank you very much, Aubrey. Seven Canadian. What are Cappy's top five rules against to not be in debt? PSA. All right, it's not. No, no, it's not. These are just the five rules that will make sure your life isn't completely wasted. Okay, this will, this will, there's no guarantees in life. Of course, you could be hit by a bus. These are the five rules. To make it so you aren't poor. You might be born poor. You follow these five rules, you won't be poor. <clears throat> Do not major in dumb shit. Spend less than you make. Do not ha have kids you can't afford. Do not commit crime and do not get married. Things not to do. It's like dieting. Dieting should be really easy. You're working out, you got to do something. You got to lift heavy objects and run long distances. Dieting? You do not put the food in your face. You 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 less calorie. It's something you don't do. You just sit on your ass and you don't get up, grab the food, and put it in your mouth. <clears throat> so these are don't do's. I didn't say anything about majoring in engineering or working hard. Just don't do those five things, and you're very, 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 very likely not to be poor. Dung is fun. Two bucks. Give Cappy a rumple mints now so you can be happy. It just Oh, I miss Rumplemans. I miss Rumplemans so much. Just, I can, dude, and I'm in Vegas now where there's like bars within walking distance that have it. Ask me how I know. Where I'd wake up at 3 a.m. like, I can't do that. I'm going to walk down to the bar. I saw a shot of Rumplemans. 4.30 after three of them walk back home. Out. <clears throat> the Bachelor. Two bucks. You tell them, Cappy, they need to exercise. I... I don't care if people, ladies, go take your O's and pick. You don't need no man. Men are necessary. You don't need no man. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, my God. You don't need a man. Like, oh, geez, you're a pick me. And then they all, O's and pick will make me thin. Then will I get the guys off? Give me. I, I want men, but not enough to hit the treadmill or stop stuffing food in my face. I mean, let's be real here. I only like men ranked. Men are ranked about fifth or sixth in our lives yeah giving up the pizza yeah pizza or love and a man with children oh yeah pi pizza it's true it's true <clears throat> uh, uh katie hey man what's up 20 bucks why do junior consultants from boston consulting group is bcg and I like make so much money what can they possibly teach right out of the out of and <clears throat> elite school, a seasoned CEO manager. I, you know what? I don't know. I have no idea. I've never understood like Boston or McKinsey or Bain or that point. Anderson, Anderson consulting, at least you had the accountants who would know the underlying beginnings and ins and outs of your company. But uh, Anderson consulting was just good looking people. That's all it was. I, if I had to speculate, Arcadia, I don't know. I was never in that field. I think it's just. Uh, the <clears throat> management of the companies cannot accept the fact that at the end of their day, if they do their job right, it should be boring and it should be like a well-oiled machine. And so all of a sudden they, they might get to that point and then kind of like a Democrat politician, it's like, okay, you've done it now. 
You got the thing. You have the optimal level of laws. You don't have to make any more laws. They can't help themselves. They have to do something. We need to ban cigarettes. We need to ban cars. We need to ban white people. Whatever, <clears throat> whatever scourge they need to get rid of. And they go on these crusades because otherwise they just sit there and have nothing to do. And so I think it's a in part, it's something to do. And well, we got to have someone analyze our processes or whatever bullshit they do. I also think that sometimes it's just so much money. They're like, well, we should get some consultants in here. It could be tax deduction. I never understood the tax deduction argument. It's like, well, just save the money. You're losing that money going to pay the other people. Uh, and I think it's a flex. I think, oh, we're getting Bane in here. Bane's like, oh my God, we're Bane. And then they, I, I can guarantee you this. Uh, Anderson Consulting, when it was around, buddy of mine worked for him. He says they only hire good looking, uh, good looking people. Chad will tell you, Elkins, that in accounting firms, the pretty girls are in audit <clears throat> because they send them over. And so I think it's just to get some, I think it's just, it's just testosterone. I think it's like, we're going to get Bane in there. They're the professional people. Oh my goodness. Now the senior partners of the senior analysts might actually know something about the field and could actually, hell, I'm not saying there's no value there, but to me, it seems to be a big bunch of bullshit that I think it's just, it's just a continue. It's just a continuation of high school. It was in middle school, then went to high school. Then there was the whatever, the prom or the homecoming thing. Then it went to college where there's a homecoming thing as well, but then there's more frat parties. Then there's the nightclub things in the toilet. And then it's just corporate party. That's what I think it is. But I don't know what they're going to do now that women aren't attractive anymore. I guess they just make those women more valuable. <clears throat> but yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know why. Maybe it's connections. Maybe, you know, if they went to Ivy League, they know people. I mean, that's obvious. That's why you make money in the Ivy League. It's not because it's the Ivy League. It's because you're connected to rich people. Uh, Penn, 764, 250 pesos. Again, advanced Merry Christmas, Cappy, and the chat. Thank you for what you do. I have nothing better to do. Literally nothing better to do. I uh, I will do this probably until I'm dead. Garrett Howard, five bucks. For a minimalist with a family, two kids max, what would be the ideal number of beds, baths, and square footage? All right. <clears throat> All right. I'm glad you asked that. Very good. I'm glad you consulted me, Garrett. You didn't go to Boston Consulting Group because, uh, ah, ha, ha. Well, uh, for $800. No, here's what it is. What The way you answer that, I can't give you an answer. How many bedrooms and baths? I mean, I, I got an idea, but let me give you a different angle. If you are married, Garrett, I don't know if you are or not, but <clears throat> let's say you are. And you and your wife are thinking about having two kids, right? What you and your wife should do is go read Reconnaissance Man, find out where you guys want to live forever, and you go buy your forever home. And what I would do is I would get a house for you and your wife. That would be the house you stay in after the kids leave. And you'd say, but where are the kids going to stay? Well, I don't know if you've ever seen Leave it to Beaver. They will share a room. I mean, me and my brother had bunk beds, all right? And then, well, <clears throat> for a while, we slept on the floor mattress, but that was fine. Your kids, you don't know. And you get a bunk bed. The boys always shared a room. Uh, you know, usually you separate boys and girls, give the girls a little bit of privacy. I'll grant you that. But girls can bunk up, all right? <clears throat> and then with two kids, you know, if, that's not a lot of kids. Uh, you could put them in one room and then... You and the missus, if one of you works, you have a, a room to work in while the other one goes to the actual office, whatever. It depends on your whether you're working remotely or what, who's working out of the house. But I would start with what do we want our forever home to be when the kids leave and we have our forever home? That's the home you buy. And the reason why is that when the kids leave, you and the missus are probably going to have some kind of activity or hobby that you want to do. And you take the kids' room and you make it your respective offices. So while the kids are there, your focus should be the children. Do you hear that, ladies? Sacrilege, blasphemy. How dare you think of someone not of, that isn't me? <clears throat> so you could have two rooms, depending on whether you and your wife work at home. But you guys have one room. The kids each maybe have their own room or they share a room, but then you have another room for a joint office for you and the wife. Again, depends on your employment situation. <clears throat> kids get out of the house. You wipe up and clean up the kitchen island. You start banging your woman proper again on the kitchen island. You tear up the carpet because kids are puking and farting and what all the other 
things that come out of kids. You, you redo the house once, the kid's room now turns into your office. The other office that you share becomes her office or your office. I don't care what. You got your bedroom. The kids are gone. Now you got your house. You've already downsized and you have yourself a little bit of space. That is what I would have for a family of two. I don't believe in starter homes. I don't believe in the be popular. My kids are now in high school. We have to be the popular family. Just fucking ruins it. You don't need no five bedroom, four bathroom McMansion. There doesn't have to be a toy room. That's what outside is for. <clears throat> and then when the kids are gone, you should say, no, this is where we want to live. We like this community. And now that you, the yay, like, the day they get their high school diploma, like, you got a big old red wiffle ball bat and you beat your kid out of the house. Get out of here. Get, get, get. Got to bang your mom on the kitchen island. Get. Put on the pencil skirt, woman. This is Coach Greg Evans. And then the kids are gone. You got your perfect retirement home and you have to buy three different fucking homes. That's, that, that's what I would recommend. <clears throat> so, I mean, four people max, you and the wife are in one room. Uh, you have your master thing, kids, two kids, put them in the same room. So you got two bedroom, two baths, you know, they could share a bath. Uh, and then I'd say living room, kitchen. Um, if you have a basement, I don't know where you are. The basement could be turned into a playroom for the kids or whatever. You need some storage or whatever. Um, you can be smart with your square footage. Like if you got a garage and there's an attic above, you could turn that into a playroom or something or run heat up. I'm, I'm thinking you have your office somewhere where you can be left alone if you're working from home. But not more <clears throat> not more than a four-bedroom. And by bed, okay, I mean bedrooms like 1970s. Not this is our closet and it's the size of a fucking room. You got to think like a Mexican immigrant here. How many people can we fit in that room? Well, that's the closet. That's a big-ass fucking closet. You could fit three people and you could fit three beds in here, like rooms, right? So <clears throat> there's none of the mud room in the laundry that's in the basement. So one bedroom, two bedroom, at most four bedrooms, two of which are going to be used for an office <clears throat> or maybe storage or something. That, that's the most. Four bedroom, two bath. Because then both you and your wife have yourself a... Uh, an office to work in. All right. That's it. Uh, links to everything Jermaine below. We'll see you guys later. Toodles.